Good morning, everybody. This is King Harp. I want to say a one thing, and I asked a question this morning. And one question I'm going to ask, and I will say welcome, um, slave, slave descendants. Um, but why the question I'm going to ask, which everybody has already probably asked, but let's just do it today. Have you noticed nobody wants to talk about slavery? Nobody wants to talk about slavery. When the subject is that comes up about slavery, people detour. They veer away. They become bashful, um, shamed. Um, the talking points become manipulated. Um, it's a lot in that. And the reason I, I think why there's an uncovering of how our nation is positioned in terms of of us, of slavery. And now, and, and I mean right now, because what has happened, there was a hiding of information due to the slaves, due to me and my lineage, even through our educational systems, even through our educational system in our schools and colleges, whereas though that we don't reflect knowledge about how we have been anchored in position due to the fact that it's very heinous and against our constitution and due to the fact that there's a debt owed, a rifle exchange in a nation that has been exchanged among groups that we have not received as heirs of slaves and being an ex-slave. And we didn't know that there were states who had the code of conduct that a freed slave could not come in that state, New Orleans, Virginia. And you can look all that up. And I and I get a lot of my information from just reading, following black prose, following um, our doctors, our professors, you know, Dr. Anderson. I mean, I follow all of you guys because I think we're a community. I don't care who it is, whether it be Tariq Nasheed, Boris Watkins, Yvette Cornell, everybody's important, Antonio Moore. Everybody is important. You see, unity is power itself. And, you know, I know we're going to have our differences because we're human and we're supposed to. Just like a sister and a brother, everybody's supposed to have their differences. A lot of times they make people closer according to the way it happens. It may not seem like it, but you become more of a person. And then you learn to coexist, whereas you di disagree to agree, and now everything's aired out and you can now move on in greatness and for the greater good. So I know that may sound for fetch to some people according to their ideology among each other as black people and as descendants of slaves. But this is foremost the truth in terms of my assessment. Now, slavery, so we all in the same boat, but we have a, a different approach in terms of how we should execute, but we all on the same subject. And the ground is swole. And we are not allowing the media to manipulate our talking points. We are not allowing that to deface, constantly to deface our value in terms of exploitation. Now, because we don't have any power sector in the media or anywhere in this country, even according to who we are. As though, like, for instance, Byron Allen, he owns the Weather Channel. Blacks are icons and rich people in the United States, but they're, we're not wealth. We're not considered wealth. We're actually contagion to it. And you can more or less lose your wealth being a black person than gaining it. It's happened to people in my life. They've lost wealth. So we're, we're, we're in a space where we're peculiar people. And in masses, as ex-slaves and as slave descendants, we are subservitude to the society in terms of business where we have to go out and perform a duty, get an education and pay for it. We're not free from taxes as though we should be according to how we were anchored and who we are. We were a people that were taken advantage of and stripped down to nothing, to the to, even to the to the lowest point of being considered and constituted so much percentage of human. I mean, totally stripped. 
and stripped of our right to reflect and learn in education. I mean, you can just go on and on about the conspiracy um, pointing to black people, slave descendants. You can go on and on. And this is why we have such substantial, substantial argument and it's such a prestigious conversation in which the way we are carrying it through. You see, this is, I think, what they don't like and what they really can't fight against. There's no way. So the rhetoric is going back and forth and they know we're talking and they should know. Because now we're not constituted as necessarily as people who are not paying attention. We were disdained with politics. And this this is our problem. One major problem we have is we don't do politics. We have to do politics. Politics is a it's like being a mathematician. Mathematician, you have to look into the science of what has happened and what is laying in order to continue in order to to um execute for the greater good. And politics is your life. This is the 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 the, the rule of law and the Constitution and everything that uh, declares something over your head and under your feet is according to what you can, how you can exchange for your life. And what they have not done is been, we have not reciprocated loyalty in terms of government, you see. And what government would do is force, it will, it will force um, a, a reckoning. And to make right what have been made wrong. Reparations is repairing. That's not money. That's a different anchoring. That's a historical event. That's the gov government constituting you as importance and writing your story wrong according to what happened to you as a group. Slavery was an institution that executed for many centuries, 400 years. That's a taking of people's mind. We don't even really know in totality what slavery actually did. We have to live it according to according to what it is and was. But we're still learning right now the true attributes and the true endeavor of slavery. Even our, the minds of our people, we learned it about what a mammy was and how we had to drink the breast milk of a feared slave. I mean, those things are getting your DNA. And we are exceptional people here now to be standing strong, having a, a beautiful um, exchange among each other and rhetoric about it right now. So, you see, I, I want to, you see, you have to look at this right now. And, and reparations is so misinformed among black people. And I think we, we're actually getting it. But let's continue to talk about it. You see, those politicians and those white politicians in the Democratic Party are worse than Donald Trump. Bloomberg, I mean... They don't know, they act like, he said the hard, most horrible things about black people, and I know he said stuff about brown people too, but I'm only concerned about us, because there's nobody else like the American Negro that has to experience living uh, under America. These immigrants that come here, they come here for an opportunity, they have made a choice to be here. These, the United States, is the ground of our captivity. So therefore, you have to understand the difference in, in positioning and you have to understand the difference in what is yours and what's actually owed to you according to who you are. So now there's been a, now there's been a um, misconception of who you are and the, and the waters have been tried to, well, it has been muddy the waters and, and it's been a little murky but we came to clear the picture and this is all of us at the grassroots this is the most important thing and if you read books about grassroots movements we are the people the people you can outpower the people there's a, a way which the people are in power together a code of conduct there's a precise way 
of science that you are the people. So we control what happened to us in unity. And it doesn't matter if somebody may not get along here or there, but we're all talking about the same thing. There may be different, a few different titles according to what we need as a fire to keep the conversation going, to keep the pressure on, to keep the pressure on Wall Street, to keep the pressure on the over office, to keep the pressure on every system, every the the the, the um, local politicians. I mean, this is a substantial, very substantial, substantial argument, and it's 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 a very um, real situation. It's more real according to what we experience than anyone else. So they can say slavery is over. And according to us and, and, and the 400 years, yeah, it's over. But it's not over in terms of what has happened and what you have to, what you have to, to be in likeness of as an heir of a slave. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being left locked out the room and being locked out of our, our inheritances and our correction. And I'll say this one more time. Reparations is not somebody just getting a check, money. No, that's a different anchoring. That's a, that's a historical event. That's a different positioning. That's a forcing of government to correct that which they have harmed. That's a reparation is repairing. So your your second your second amendment, your second amendment is very important. Your your constitutional rights become implemented. These are the rules of law according to you. And the American Negro is one uh, I, from my assessment is one of the most important people on the planet. And this is the truth. So if you if you want to do an assessment, start by asking the question, why is everybody coming here? In the land of milk and honey, where the wealth came from the institution of slavery, free labor, and the ideas of slaves, and the ideas of ex-slaves who helped engineer a exchangeable functioning society, very successful society, where people flock here even when they don't deserve to be here, according to the way we're positioned. Now, the United States exchange is in capital and in business camaraderie. This is a great empire that we have built with our backs, and yet we're not corrected in the political arena where their constitution states what we should have. So what reparations do, it will make the constitution wear gloves for you. It's already there, but the, according to who we are, the laws have not been implemented, and a lot of it has been exploited through whistleblower terms, like minority, people of color. So other people are embodying even leadership in our institutions. And those institutions were born through our heinous exchange and the failure that we had to eat as slaves. All those institutions. And even the birthright citizenship. So these things are being manipulated by people who are considered to be valuable here according to our blood. And yet we haven't been corrected. This is very... Um, it's insane, but it, it stops here. So, I mean, we, you know, this is the thing. And with this president debate, I'm going to say this, and I, and I hope somebody really hear this. Black people, slave descendants, or other slaves, you don't have anybody with Bloomberg or Joe Biden. These are the people who have written laws and been lawmakers to your demise. Joe Biden... He read the crime bill for mass incarceration, and this is why our children are in prison for a long time for, for things like marijuana. People going to prison for nothing, just being accused of something. Blacks cannot afford attorneys. Mass incarceration. Parchment in Mississippi. That's a concentration camp. It's beneath the government expectation on almost every level. There's, they're dying in there. This is part of Joe Biden 
um, idea. And then Bloomberg, the things he say and do about black people or even people of color, as a matter of fact, in the United States of slavery. Well, see, this is what happens. They What they have is an iota of, the, see, let me tell you something about white supremacy. I study them. They have a code of conduct of laws that was implemented for slaves, and they regurgitate talking points of their um, elders, and in part, that's imparted to them, and they emulate that. That's why you're constantly getting this um, redlining, this sort of kind of pushback, and this picture drawn of who you are or what they may consider you to be. And all this kind of exploitation. Because you were never ba bas basically accessing any type of equal playing field. But yet you survive. And that, that which you're supposed to access is what we're discussing now. And, uh, and see, this is a forcing of government. It's it, not us necessarily forcing the government, but when the government um, consider, when the government makes a choice to be loyal to um, a system or a group, what that happens is you're made in a different way. So access and reparations is a protected class citizenship. Money is an incentive among that in order to survive, in order to respect the idea of that, the government which you are important people. So when you correct people in terms of government and policy, what happens is a nation is forced to respect the idea of that lineage. You have talked to the head. It's almost like when you walk in a house and you want this family to do something, you find the head of this family and you reckon with the head. The government and the political arena is the head and we have gone uncorrected. No one, no one's going to respect you, any government entity, police stations, anybody, because your government policy has not constituted you as important in the way which they constitute people important. The United States exchanges in reparations. That's a historical event. That's a, that's a thing that's already been done. So for us to have HR 40 in terms of reparations, some might know who that might know what that is. That's something that John Kanye started in 1980. It's, it's pretty much an insult to us because we're a lot of us who are out here speaking, we're very astute people, educated people, people who understand laws and terms. Why would you have to study a bill to study a bill when something has already been exchanged among other people in our society? in a developed society from other countries. The Jews have been anchored in the importance, according to the Holocaust. The Indians have their own land. They exchange in the United States value of dollar and protection, according to their pillaging, what the things happened to them. But nothing and nobody has experienced the hardship of slaves in these United States. And no one has been the pillar of wealth for a nation like the American Negro. And yet we've gone un un uncorrected. This is ridiculous. So, so that, that would make the, the argument substantial. And that's why we're saying, write it wrong. Get it straight, organize it, do what you got to do. It's not bothering us to have this conversation because we know what happens. We, we go to a different plateau. We, go, we have conventions. We do this. We do that. We pull people apart. No, we don't want nobody embodying leadership that is um, basically um, a snake, basically a liar. The Democratic Party has a policy that is terrible. It's the benign and the neglect, and they are big government. And one day I'm going to talk about them being big government. A lot of people don't know what big government is. The Democratic Party has a lot of power, a lot of power, and they run the media, and they write the narrative, and it's the Dixiecrat. No, I'm not saying Republicans are something that, oh, they better and everything. But what I'm saying is that they're transparent in terms of what the Democrat has done right now as we speak. So, no, reparations is something that's definitely needed in a nation. 
It's a it's a part of the anchor. We are natives to this society, literally. We were born and shaped here. So I want to talk about reparations and let you know that how important it is. It's almost like a glass of water for survival in terms of what this is. You can't come in a certain place being what it's not. You can't go into a restaurant and sit down like you in a church because there's no pews. There's no preacher. So it's a restaurant. Well, this is the United States. This is the first world nation. We have to exchange according to what this is. And this has been this way for a while. We have bought into the illusion of normalizing something that other people have not, according to our position. And that has caused privacy and privacy crimes. Now, we begin to do the work. So this is what this is. And we could talk more about what the importance of reparations really is and how it really affects and, and, and what has happened according to you not having a protection of government uh, in many ways. That, that, that's a very interesting subject and topic that, that we're not supposed to talk about because protected class citizenship is, uh, re is a requirement of like a necessity according to the exploitation of, of the uh, attributes of the society. So anyway, I just want to do a quick talk and let you know that we're still here and we're talking and uh, much obliged to the new voices of black media. This is King Hart. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm going to get out and do some things and I'm going to come back and, and lay a few subjects on you. Thank you for listening to my soundbite.